Tolkien hasn't just had an impact on the world of literature and film, but you know, I think gaming has been heavily influenced by the ideas, the aesthetics, the works of Tolkien. And when you look back at the early days of the video game industry, guys like Richard Garriott creating these CRPGs where as far back as 1979, his first game was actually called Akalabeth World of Doom, which is a direct Tolkien reference. And this was back in the days of very rudimentary graphics. I mean, we're talking black and white, Apple II, very, very primitive graphics with a lot of text as well. But this is kind of the genesis of the RPG genre on PC, this transition from tabletop D&D style pen and paper RPG to the personal computer. And Garriott would go on to create the Ultima series, which ended up being very influential. I guess you could call the 80s and 90s kind of the golden age of the CRPG. You know, this is the Western style RPG, top down. Very, very deep, dense, a lot of text with an emphasis on D&D style combat and progression. There's this elemental meat and potatoes that come with Tolkien that involves the races of men and elves, dwarves, you know, magic archetypal stories of good and evil and of course you can see just how easy it was to, to draw from this vast mythos i mean tolkien is really the wellspring of the fantasy genre and truly the, the size of the lore is mind-blowing when you really dig into it you realize that tolkien was just uh, another class of fantasy author i mean really he is the master of world building he was a literal scholar of Anglo-Saxon history and linguistics, and this allowed him to really give the aesthetics and the setting of Middle-earth this authenticity. It just feels so detailed, and it's really easy to get immersed in it. I mean, I really recommend The Silmarillion. I mean, that's my favorite Tolkien book because it really does get into the nitty-gritty of the lore of Arda, right? This is what the world is called, and we start from the actual creation of the universe itself. You know, Tolkien is giving us so much detail. We're getting the full creation story of this fantasy world. It's insanely based and epic. And, you know, one of the key components of Lord of the Rings and all of Tolkien's works, they're created as this kind of legendarium of Europe, the Western European experience and consciousness and culture is mirrored in the works of Tolkien. and he, It's like his gift to his people saying, here, I've created this mythology for you and please enjoy it. It's going to tell you a lot about yourself. And it really is important to take note of this before we talk about Rings of Power and all the controversy. Because as someone that lives in the UK, I mean, I, I've experienced different sides of living in this country, right? But I understand what Tolkien was going for in his depiction of the Shire. And the hobbits, the, the, the simple country folk that live this beautiful, comfy life, living off the land, farming in this rural, wholesome countryside setting. That tempo of life. I mean, Tolkien loved that. Just soak up the imagery and the symbolism of the hobbits living in the Shire, and you can see clearly what Tolkien himself valued about his country and his countrymen. And it's a side of British culture that still exists, funnily enough, but it's been bleached away in terms of relevance. It's been eroded over the last however many decades. It's been targeted by a lot of academic critique, too. As in this traditional, rural, community-centric British lifestyle is somehow exclusionary, it's racist, you know, it's um, an aspect of white supremacy. I mean, we, we've heard this for years. The BBC, you know, signal boosts a lot of this insane Marxist autism, but... If you have any respect for Tolkien, then you should respect the fact that the Shire really is a love letter to British culture, a very specific part of it. And there's just so much about the depiction of the Shire and the Hobbits that I really love. I mean, if you just look at Frodo and Sam and their characterization, they are an interclass friendship, really, because Sam is but a humble gardener, and his family has been employed by the Baggins family for generations, and yet there is this real closeness, and the fact is, I mean, Frodo is kind of an aristocratic elite hobbit, or at least somewhat wealthy. It seems like the Baggins clan do have a somewhat higher status within this hierarchy of hobbit society. But even with this class divide, that doesn't affect the friendship and the respect between the Bagginses and the Gamgees, and to a modern consumer of fiction, this comes across as quite refreshing, actually. I mean, if this story was written today, 
really Sam should be a resentful, seething fucking dick, <laughs> right? Who just wants to see Frodo get dragged down to his level. Yeah, fuck you, Frodo, you fascist. You know, what about the hobbits of color, right? We should be redistributing the Baggins' wealth across the Shire and beyond, you know? I think that orcs deserve some reparations. And that's kind of like the modern way of looking at this. And it, it doesn't jive with the values of Tolkien the man. Hey, wait a minute, there are no hobbits of color in the lore. Well, sorry, there are now, shit lord. And uh, we have these journalists now that are telling us it's unreasonable to want to do an actual fateful adaptation of Tolkien. Because he's a man from a different time and his works are fundamentally toxic and they need to be updated. And then you ask yourself, well, well hold on, showrunners, you know, J.J. Abrams' duo that he's nepotized into helming, you know, the most expensive TV series of all time. Why pick Lord of the Rings? You know, why, if it's so problematic and toxic, why adapt it in the first place? I mean, how can you even call yourselves fans of Tolkien while also believing that the man has irredeemable values? I mean, oh, wait a minute, I know why. It's because this is the modern entertainment industry. And counterintuitively, the modern entertainment industry is not about entertaining you. It is about, at best, imposing onto you this outsider's value system via propaganda. And at worst, I mean, actively demoralizing you. In fact, that seems to be the case for most entertainment properties these days. Really, I mean, the people creating these movies and these shows and video games too now, these industry types have no respect for you whatsoever. In fact, they hate you. And, you know, you can go, well, what did I do? I didn't do anything. Don't try and make sense of it. Just remember that by their own standards of internal logic, based on their own weirdo 20th century ideology, it's justified. Completely. It kind of gives them carte blanche to do whatever they need to do to advance their politics. And if that means actively trying to ruin as many historical Western works of literature, film, art, architecture, you know, they will ruin it all. And for them, it's like we're getting off lightly because a disturbing amount of these types are literally genocidal in their hatred of the European people and race. You know, it's like, this isn't hyperbole. Normal, happy human beings can't even understand this mindset. Perhaps that's part of how things got this absurd in the first place, because over the last however many decades, we've really undergone kind of like a bloodless revolution throughout many different institutions in society that nobody voted on. You know, there was no real cognizant choice that the people of our countries should be pushing towards this super negative self-loathing identity that we have now, prescribed to us by this academic movement of neo-Marxists and their counterparts in the various entertainment industries, where whether it be feminism or some kind of economic ideology or even racial ideology, it's fundamentally Europhobic. You know, you can call it anti-white as well, anti-Western. But either way, this stuff was developed specifically to disenfranchise and harm a certain group within the very civilization that their ancestors built as Tolkien was directly referencing in his works. Our contemporary societies in the West are fundamentally anti-European. And then you hear someone go, well, yeah, even if that's true, well, that's just progress because we deserve it, right? Because of the bloody history of blah, 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 blah. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. You're demoralized. If you think that, if you think that your own people don't deserve a future, you are demoralized. And I wouldn't wish that on any culture. I wouldn't want the Africans to be demoralized in Africa. I don't want the Chinese to be demoralized in China based on a bunch of egghead word salad that's totally unjustified in the first place. Everybody, as in everybody in the world, should be free to feel pride in their national identity and their culture, right? There's nothing wrong with that. And we wouldn't ask this shame and this self-flagellation of any other group of people or race in the entire world. You wouldn't want the Japanese to feel ashamed to be Japanese in Japan. You know, what about Jews in Israel? Do we want Jews in Israel to feel ashamed of being Jewish? As if, right? But, you know, for us here in the Western world, we must be reminded at every opportunity that we are a tainted people, that the sins of our ancestors were so great that even hundreds of years later, you know, a newborn baby in 2022 still is stained with the very original sins of less racism, you know, less sexism, whatever. Like, you've heard it, you know it, 
it's the secular religion of wokeism. For me, as a white, straight male chud living in the UK, the rings of power sucks my balls. That's my review. But then, you know, I'm seeing uh, in, in a lot of the YouTube-based sphere, right, where you have these YouTubers that are a little bit more contrarian, they're criticizing the series, but they're also doing the whole I'm not racist thing where they're going, I dislike it not because of the diversity, but because of the poor writing and the bad pacing and the dog shit tier acting. And it's like, well, that is all true. But you're also a huge cuckold because, hot take, it's perfectly reasonable to criticize the diversity in this fucking show, along with all these other racially subversive entertainment properties that are shoved down our throats. This isn't being done out of necessity or for any kind of morally justifiable reasoning. Quite the contrary, actually. You are being re-educated via gaslight and you're paying for the privilege. You're the problem, and anyone that doesn't think you're the problem, even if they're like black or Asian, they're also part of the problem. Really, anyone or anything that casts the European people in a positive light is fundamentally problematic in a kind of creepy, pre-genocidal kind of manner where it's like, okay, so here's your Lord of the Rings series, and it's gonna tell you how you really don't deserve a future. And you know, if I could, as showrunner, I would simply wipe your race from the face of the earth Thanos style, and I can't do that. But what I will do is I'll try and ruin and corrupt and drag down and cheapen all of the things from your cultural history and past that was once appreciated by the entire world. Well, it all has to be vandalized now in the name of progress. But a lot of the time, these modern creators, they don't give a shit about minorities or equality or perceived social justice. It's not sincere, it's performative. I mean, Ted Kaczynski wrote a lot about this, but they have a hate boner for white people because they fucking hate white people. It's that simple, and a lot of these people are white themselves. And really, none of this intersectionalism really makes any sense outside of the US. I mean, you know, this is why I love that label of white. It's just pure negative identity. It has that, like, Amerocentric CIA edge to it, like an MK Ultra op, you know? White is bad. Black is good. Repeat, you know? Take the LSD. And just remember, white people, quote unquote, don't have a culture or a history worth celebrating, preserving, even discussing. Don't think about it so much. What you should be doing is consuming and whacking off over original streaming service television. Another entertainment series and motion picture film universes and battle royale style trans-inclusive video games and, you know, Zuckerberg's metaverse. Because I'm never going to get laid in real life, so maybe I'll get laid in the metaverse. Because that's all I have to live for as a straight white male. As I squeak out the last few years of my durable-like existence, replacing these timeless works by J.R.R. Tolkien with pornography and drugs and race guilt, this is the ideal consumer. They don't want OG fans of classic Western fantasy on board at all. Your standards are too high, right? Not just your taste in fantasy, but your entire fucking racial and civilizational experience. It's totally not valid, right? So Tolkien warned us about this. It's the scouring of everything that we once cherished. It, <laughs> like there's no talking our way out of it. There's no debating it. There's no voting on it. We're donezo. And <laughs> Bezos and Amazon would like to remind us as mandated by ESG, we're donezo. So of course, Galadriel is a feminist, right? Carandriel. It's politically incorrect to even do a character like Aragorn at this point, because I mean, any depiction of like a positive European masculine character is just considered literal hate symbology. So unfortunately, shows work on feminism, meaning that we can't cast like an actually attractive actress as this ethereal, queen of the elves, you know, one of the most beautiful beings to ever exist in Tolkien's universe. That's in the Jackson movies, you know? I mean, Boromir is, he's weeping at the very sight of Galadriel. But not only is this a problematic depiction of femininity, but it alienates this audience of stained pajama-wearing 30-year-old feminist cat ladies. I mean, they're definitely a target demographic. So, yeah, we need an unintimidating female lead who it just looks like a ferret, you know? She looks like a, a rat lady, right? Like she should play a member of a fantasy kind of subhuman race of, of rats. She could be like the rat princess. I think that would be a great role. 
uh, but this isn't working for me. Galadriel's not working for me. I think Kate Blanchett was a perfect choice because she has this almost alien quality to her. Perfect. I mean, you know, they shot her in slow motion. Cinematography is just emphasizing this otherworldly way of the elves, you know? And, like, I, I think Jackson nailed that. And in contrast, you can see how this show is actually quite uncomfortable about depicting elves because the elves just look ugly. I mean, they, they, they are fugly elves. We can't cast attractive, almost Aryan-looking white people in our entertainment anymore. Are you insane? That's, in, that's, that's crazy. No. You know, no, no more Orlando Bloom. No more Liv Tyler, right? We need Rat Princess Galadriel, who also works at the local 7-Eleven. You know, she's, yeah. Because, you know, aesthetic beauty is kind of like a Euro-autistic fascist thing. So, yes, meet scuffed Elrond, who is also gay. Because this is a pro-LGBTQ show. Got it? you fucking worms, you know? And we're gonna go out of our way to depict racism within this universe, but instead of it being racism based on color, it's racism based on fantasy race, where the black elf is discriminated against and called Nyfear, which by the way is from The Witcher. Nice one, plagiarists. But yeah, we hate elves. Fuck you, elf. So it's like, oh, here we go. Here's the uncomfortable, racially tense situation, which is essential, of course, a scene like this is probably personally masturbated to by uh, Larry Fink himself, but it's confusing. I mean, this is a black elf, and he's not like a mutant elf. As far as elves are depicted within this universe, he is treated like every other elf, but he is discriminated against racially based on his elfness by a white human male, which of course rings true. You know, that's some fantastic social commentary, and it's necessary, right? Because this is not just fun and games, all right? Retards. Just watch the show. Anyone that criticizes it is a racist or whatever, right? Just, but, but, you know, stop arguing about it online and just shut up. This isn't about you. It's not for you, okay, chud baby? The diversity is a breath of fresh air. Tolkien is some kind of crusty white male. Ew, he's gross. Whatever, I don't even really care, but you seem to like Tolkien, so that means I don't like it and I want to change it. I want to change everything that you like. I don't even really know why. I'm just filled with this sense of instinctive, revolutionary drive. I just want to destroy everything you love.